morning, Bible class students. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and I am so excited about today's lesson. I'm so excited that you chose to join me today. If you're wondering what that handlebar is, I'm going to show you. Okay, look, it's my husband's bike. He brought that in. It was too cold in the garage. So, just to get that out of the way, I have a very special treat for you all. So, there are people that you don't know that are in your Bible class. And I want to show you a little hello from Lexington Christian Academy right here. Hey, all right, guys, this is our LCA Christian school, all of our students, and there's teachers. Everybody say hello. <laughs> we love these people. They are amazing people. I taught at Lexington Christian Academy for two years and then for a year in Bible class. They joined us last year and then this year as well. So just so you know, they're a fantastic group of um, students and staff and teachers. They are wonderful people that I love very dearly. And this morning we're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 16. We are all the way in chapter 16, y'all. It, it just went so fast. We're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 16, verses 1 through 10. We're going to talk about deficient love today. And I'm pulling off some of our lesson from a beautiful woman of God. Her name is Nona Freeman. She's passed on to be with the Lord. She was a missionary for years in Africa and other places. And she shared some very powerful things about love that I want to put on here. So I'm going to play her video, um, her some of her preaching, and I'm going to let you listen to that. But let's go ahead. We're going to stop and pray. You know the drill. If you haven't scored, I want you to get into God's presence for a few minutes. Okay, let's pray together for just a few minutes. Lord, we love you so much this morning. We thank you for the power of your word and for what you're going to speak to us. And Lord, in ourselves, we are all deficient in love because we need your love to operate in us to love people that we struggle with, people that um, in our own human strength we cannot love. But Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do in every heart today. God, impart wisdom, impart understanding, and God, send a word to someone today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so Proverbs chapter 16, verse 1 says, The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, and that's because the heart is deceitful. But the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Every one that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. That's our key verse for today, verse 7. Verse 8, better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. Verse 9, a man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Verse 10 is our final verse today. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king. His mouth transgresseth not in judgment. All right, so first of all, we need to establish, let's go back to our key verse today. Our key verse is verse um, seven. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. How many of you have, has ever had an enemy? I want you to just raise your hand. I know. Okay, so I'm just going to say this. If you have never had an enemy, you just probably hadn't lived long enough. <laughs> because enemies come, and enemies, um, they're just someone that's against you, or they feel threatened by you. For instance, if you look at you know, the different countries that have been in war, um, they're, they're countries that there's the bully country that's trying to, you know, create problems or take over. And then here's the country trying to defend itself. Well, they consider each other enemies because there's no peace in between them. Now, in God's 
uh, among God's children, there should never be enemies. Now, I know because it's like a family, like your family and mine. We have, um, I have three boys and a girl, and they don't always get along, right? But in the end, they have each other's back. So in, in the family of God, not everything is perfect, right? We all have different opinions, and, and sometimes we can feel like enemies, but God did not call us to be enemies. He called us to be friends, to be brother and sister, to protect one another. And if we have an enemy, the only enemy we should have is that force of evil that is working against us to divide and conquer our homes, our communities, our churches. You got to know who your real enemy is. So let's talk about love. We've talked about our enemy. Our enemy is someone that there is no peace around. Okay, um, but let's talk about love. There are different kinds of love. So you got your you got your lower level and that's your human love that's the kind of love that you can do right <laughs> so you love people that love you back right and the second level is eros love and that's the love of a spouse that's an intimate love that's a love that i love you enough to marry you okay and then there is the god love the god love the agape love and that's the love that says, I love you no matter if you treat me wrong. I love you no matter if you don't love me. And if that love is not returned, it's the same love that Jesus had when he died on the cross. He died on the cross for the, the two thieves beside him, the soldiers that were beating him. He died on the cross for each one of us without us even, whether we accept him or reject him, that's a, a supernatural love. That's the kind of love we cannot produce in ourselves. But as God's children, he calls us to love. So I want us to look at our key verse here. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Now, you have to understand that when someone loves, truly loves the Lord, then what they do is going to be pleasing to the Lord. They're going, when you're walking in a way that is honoring to God, there's going to be peace that is just automatically on you. So when I go to Isaiah 9, 6, it says, unto us a uh, child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And then verse 7 goes on to say that of his government and peace, there will be no end. Now, this is not Christmas, <laughs> but that's a Christmas verse. But if you'll notice what ties in together is that God's government, when God's government rests on our shoulders, his government and his peace are always connected. They're interconnected. So if God is governing me, I'm going to carry peace with me. I'm not looking to start a fight. I'm not looking to be opinionated and to have my way. I'm not looking to um, irritate or aggravate. I'm looking to bring peace. The Bible said, blessed are the peacemakers, they, for they shall be called the children of God. Peace a lot of times cannot come from us. We're, we're peaceful as long as we're with friends and you know things are going our way. But when we allow God's Spirit to dwell deep within us, that love of God flows freely through us, even to people that don't deserve it. And to those have said that those that have said things about us, those that have done harmful things, manipulative things, the love of God breaks down walls. So I'm going to let you listen to some of Sister Nona Freeman's speaking. Again, this is many years ago and the recording is a little rough, but I promise you, if you'll listen, the Lord will touch your heart and we're going to pray at the end that the peace of God, the love of God would flow through us, would dwell on us, that we would walk in peace because 
you never have enemies after that. You will never have, now people will rise up against you. They might say things to you. They might um, upset you temporarily. But you know who your real enemy is. It's not people. God makes even your enemies. And sometimes, just like Joseph, just like Daniel, they all experience, just like David, they all had enemies. But in the end, the enemy saw that the Lord was with them. And God is able to bring peace to all of our relationships. Or if there cannot be peace in the relationship, there can be peace in us about the relationships. So um, let's go ahead and watch that now. There's no room for suspicions. And there's no room for hurt feelings. You see, do you know why you get offended? Love deficiency. You know what this book says? Psalms 91. Great peace have they who love thy law. Now, if you love Jesus and you love his word, nothing is going to offend you. Nothing. Nothing will offend you. And if you admit to being offended, just tell yourself, hey, lady, you've got a love shortage. You are deficient in love anything um, but I'd always been so skinny and in fact now if I even think about losing a little bit of weight my husband has a fit he said I hugged a bag of bones too many years and I don't want to do any more hugging bags of bones <laughs> uh, but anyway uh, after six weeks one morning I opened my eyes and granny's knocking on the door and brother Freeman said come in and she comes stood by the bed. Granny always wore an apron and tears was always so close by. And she starts crying. She said, now, Nona, honey, I know there's something wrong. And she said, I'm, I can do such dumb things and I have probably offended you. And she said, would you please just tell me what I've done wrong so I can make it right? I said, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> we can be so smart and so ugly. And uh, she just cried and cried. And my husband got up on his elbow and he said, Honey, if Granny's offended you, tell her about it. I said, Well, I just don't appreciate it, people making remarks about my hip bones and my ribs. I can't help it because I've never had any weight on me. I've always been skinny. And I can't help it. It's the way God made me, I guess. And so... Granny looked puzzled. She said, but honey, when did, any, when did I say anything about your hip bones and your ribs? I said, I heard you talking to Reef. I was coming down the hall, and Reef said, he, he started it. He said, I don't think she's going to make it through the winter. Look at those hip bones sticking out. And, and then talked about my ribs every time I'd move. And, and uh, she looked puzzled for a few minutes. She says, oh, Honey, we wasn't talking about you. We was talking about Old Blue, the cow. We didn't. <laughs> it's very easy to jump to conclusions. And lack of love will help you to do it. And I just want to read you some of the things. The subject of this book is Calvary Love. Would you please listen to a voice from long ago that had the leading of God? Oh, if God helps us. Oh, he must help us. If I belittle those whom I am called to serve, talk of all their weak points in contrast with perhaps what I think of as my strong points, if I adopt a superior attitude, forgetting who made thee to differ, and what hast thou that thou hast not received, then I know nothing of Calvary love. If in dealing with one who does not respond, I weary of the strain and slip from under the burden, then I know nothing of Calvary love. If I cast up a confessed, repented, and forsaken sin against another, and allow my remembrance of that sin to color my thinking 
and feed my suspicions, then I know nothing of Calvary love.